Thanks for watching Wood and Shop. I'm Joshua Farnsworth, and I want to really thank you for joining me on this video series that follows me as I turn an RV garage into my dream workshop and hand tool woodworking school. So in the last video, you saw the uh, board and battens go up on the walls. And in this video, uh, I'm gonna sh talk a little bit about what happened after that. So I had been debating for some time about whether or not I should put a ceiling up in here at first because it seemed like spray foam was gonna be really expensive and I liked the open rafter look. But I finally decided just to suck it up and drywall the ceiling and put insulation up there. And I'm really glad I did. Uh, but at first I found a guy on Craigslist, his rate seemed too good to be true. He was gonna charge me like $150 to help me finish off the work I needed to do to hang the rest of the, to hang the drywall on the ceilings. Well, he ended up bailing out halfway through the job, so I was forced to look further. And fortunately, I found a really, really awesome crew who came in and did it for not much more, and which really helped me out because it freed me up. I was in such a hurry prepping to the other things in the workshop, trying to get ready for a deadline that I have of filming a DVD with Will Myers on a great little candle stand that we found up at the Hancock Shaker Village in New York, or up in Massachusetts. So anyways, these guys did a great job. They did such a great job, and they were so affordable that I ended up hiring them to just tape and mud the ceiling as well, which I hadn't planned on. So that, that uh, increases the warmth factor <laughs> a little bit as well. And they, their, their prices were so good that I just had them go ahead and do the deck, or the, not the deck, the uh, stairs leading up to it. And that felt so cool being able to finally have a way to get up into the workshop without opening the huge garage door or, or without having to use logs to step on to get up here. So that was pretty exciting. I also had these guys uh, spray the whole entire workshop. I think it was like $200, so I couldn't have even done that. It would have taken me a lot longer to do that than these guys. So they sprayed it all white, and what an amazing feeling it was walking in here and seeing the ceiling up, the insulation in, the walls all painted. It was a real treat, and it felt started to feel like my real dream workshop. Pretty exciting. There was still quite a bit of a mess around everywhere, and I didn't have any of my tools or workbenches, but it was really starting to feel like it was coming along. Another reason why this was a real uh, help to me was I was trying to get my garden tilled up and put in, uh, in because it was starting to get really cold outside. So I, uh, I designed a garden based off of some that I had seen in Monticello here in, near Charlottesville. You know, it's Thomas Jefferson's house. He's got a really beautiful garden. And then a Colonial Williamsburg, which is about two hours from Charlottesville, has a, some really pretty gardens. Uh, so I designed a, a garden that has uh, some walking space in between it with, you know, with uh, some grass uh, so that you can kneel down and everything. And I tilled up. I had my little sons help me till the garden with a tiller that a friend loaned me. And then I put uh, down limestone and I put down fertilizer. And I got, uh, I got a couple truckloads full of manure. Yeah, I still got manure on my truck <laughs> yeah, from a really nice horse guy here in the area. Uh, so that was really fun getting the garden all prepped and I was able to I was able to raise the beds up a bit and put some straw on top. So I hope you don't mind me sharing some, some uh, personal farming experience. I grew up on a farm, I think I've mentioned, and so it's really fun getting back to my roots. Another thing I've been doing a lot here, getting ready for the winter, splitting a lot of firewood. I've already had some firewood from before, so that's hopefully going to get me through a little bit of the winter, um, but I'm splitting a whole bunch more. And fortunately for me, I've got the, uh, a large front porch that's covered from the elements. So I'm able to split wood and stack it under there, which is pretty exciting. So thanks for following me on this video number four. In the next video, uh, we'll take, we'll, you'll see some of the next steps that are coming up in this project. I'm really excited to have some classes held in here soon. So we'll, uh, I'm looking forward to, <laughs> as I'm sure you are, uh, seeing this finish. So thanks for watching Wood and Shop and for joining me here. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you'll find free video tutorials, buying guides, workshop tours, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to receive my regular blog posts and YouTube videos 
And don't forget to check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!